This video is for paid G Suite users, which include basic, business, and enterprise, along with education and government users that have iOS devices with two-step authentication already enabled with their G Suite account. If you're using a free Google account, please see an alternative video. We will be setting up the native iOS device, apps, mail, contacts, and calendar to be in sync with your G Suite cam account. Also, we'll be showing you how to solve the unlock captcha and create an app-specific password on another laptop device. This video assumes that you have two-step authentication already set up with the G Suite account. You'll need your iOS device and another device with a full desktop browser, preferably Chrome. To make things easier, but not necessary, open this YouTube video on a third device or Chrome tab on the computer that you can follow along and pause to complete instructions. These instructions are the safest method for pairing your G Suite to be in sync with the native applications on your iOS device. And it is advised to follow all of these instructions to keep them in sync and safe at all times. You'll want to perform these next steps on another computer, preferably in a Chrome browser that is not the mobile device that you're signing into. And we're going to unlock the CAPTCHA. In a new browser tab, go to accounts.google.com forward slash display unlock CAPTCHA. You might be prompted to sign in. Then you'll see the following screen where you can click continue. This will alert Google that you're going to sign in with another device. Next, you're going to go to myaccount.google.com. You'll see a screen similar to the following and click sign in and security. It will take you to the following page where you can click signing in to Google. Here you'll select app passwords. You'll see I already have one generated. You might be prompted for your Google password enter your regular password here. Now, in the, the drop-down boxes, select the app so that you can identify this later. I'm doing this for the iPhone, so I'll select mail and for device, I'll choose iPhone. Then click generate. It'll generate a password for you. Only use this password once per device because if the device becomes missing, you can revoke this later and that device will no longer have access to your Google G Suite account. In essence, we're creating an alternative password to your G Suite account. For now, you can leave this up on your screen until we enter this in the password field of the iOS device. Be sure to click done after you've entered the password in the password field. Now you can continue to authorize on your device and in your Gmail you'll also get an email stating that you've created an app specific password. On the iOS device you're setting up the account on, choose settings and select mail. Choose Accounts. And select Add Account. On this menu, choose Exchange, not Google. Enter your full G Suite email address for the email field. And in Password, Enter the app-specific password we got earlier. When copying the password, don't enter any spaces. If you left the password open 
on your other computer during the app specific generation password request, you can click done on that window now before proceeding to click next on the iPhone. For description, you can change Exchange to G Suite. This will help you identify the account later when setting up the iPhone. Double check your settings and choose Next. For server, type m.google.com. Leave the domain field blank and the username should be the same as the email address. So it's okay to copy and paste this for username. Again, keep domain field blank. The username and email address should be identical. Double check these settings and then choose next when you're finished. It will verify and should show check mark boxes when all the stages have been successfully verified. From here you can choose all of the services that you want to sync with your G Suite account on the iOS device. By having these services turned on, data will actually be stored on the device. Push save to start syncing the device with the G Suite account. After adding the account, it should bring you to the accounts window. You can always get back here by going to settings, then mail, and then selecting accounts again. Now you'll notice that our G Suite account is set up on the iPhone. Let's look at the account we just created on my device. It's called G Suite, or you might still have it called the default name Exchange. Choose that account and then select Mail Days to Sync. If security is a concern, you want to use the least amount of data on the phone, choose the lesser of the days. With the Gmail app, you can always search your entire Gmail account without needing to store any mail on the device. If you want all the mail stored and searchable within the Apple Mail app on the iOS device, then choose no limit or one month. Once you're done selecting your limit, choose the back or the account name button at the top. Now let's go back to mail settings and we'll want to make G Suite our default email application to send out as. So under default account, we're going to change this from iCloud to G Suite. Once the check mark is selected on the account, then choose the back mail button at the top. Now we'll go back to settings on the iPhone or iOS device and choose contacts because we'll want to sync our default account from iCloud now to our G Suite account so that the contacts are in sync from the iOS device to our Google account. Now let's go back to contacts. From here you should see default account under contacts as G Suite or if you left it as exchange it might be labeled that here. Next we'll go back to settings and choose calendar. We want to choose the default calendar from the Apple work calendar or whatever calendar you might have previously used and we're going to change this to the G Suite calendar so that it's in sync from the web version to the iOS device using the native calendar application on the iOS device. From here it might show your email address now as the default calendar. Your device should now be successfully set up. You can go back to the settings menu and take a look at any of those settings or push the home button 
to return back to the phone's main screen. You can now use the Apple Mail feature to send and receive emails just as you did with your iCloud account. You'll also be able to create calendar appointments in the native Apple Calendar application and your calendar should display with the appointments that you have in your web calendar at calendar.google.com. You'll notice here when you add a new event, you can switch back to your old calendar at any time, but by default, it will be your G Suite calendar based on the settings that we just set up on the device. And that will also be applicable for contacts. Don't panic if none of your contacts appear there, you may still need to import them into Google or your G Suite account. But from now on, as you create contacts in the iPhone, it will store them in your G Suite account. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe and like if you found this helpful.